Hello, this is Mike Fauche. Today I'd like to do a short video on adding an additional drive to your NAS unit and expanding your storage. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified of the next video that comes out. I've been setting up a new NAS that I want to use during for some testing and I ran out of storage. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to actually walk through drive expansion by adding a drive. Um, it's a really fairly easy process, but if you haven't done it before, I know it can be sort of in intimidating, especially the fact that it's a RAID configuration. Now, a couple things you need to know um, before just popping a drive in there. A couple of rules you should always follow is obviously make the drives the same size so don't put don't mix and match drive sizes because that will run into some additional problems if you're adding to an existing raid like a raid 5 and you want to add a drive try the best you can to use the exact drive that's in there that's not mandatory but it's highly recommended from my perspective i've been working with raid for many many years and i just found it to be part of the secret to being for it to be uh, you know, robust and reliable over the years. RAID's a really robust configuration anyway. It's not something that was just invented. It's my recommendation that as much as you can stick with drives that are identical to what's in there right, right at the moment. So let's walk through um, the process of actually adding a drive, watching it through, go through its expansion process, and then what do you do with it when it's done? So the very first thing we're going to do is hit a storage and snapshots. And as you notice, I actually have three drives there that are blue. That's part of the RAID 5 configuration. And there's an extra drive, drive number four, which I just loaded into the system, which isn't doing anything right now. So our objective is to actually add that fourth drive to the RAID 5 configuration. To get there, I'm going to click on storage and snapshots. And there you can see all of my volumes that I've created. And you, as you can see, um, one of them there in the middle is starting to run out of some space. So I'm going to click on Manage. And the purpose here is to add the fourth drive. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on Expand Pool. Now you have a couple options here. Obviously if you put in more than one drive you can create a whole separate RAID group but that's not what we're going to do today. Today what we really want to do is add a disk to an existing RAID group. So we're going to click on add disk and we're going to select the RAID group which I've only got one in there so we'll click on that one and then we'll hit next. And then we'll pick the drive that we want to add. So it's the only free drive in the system, so it's only going to show you that extra drive that you just put in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Disk 4. Hit Next. And then we have a summary. You'll see kind of what where you're coming from and where you're going to. You can see the um, current capacity is 7.25 terabytes, and the new capacity will be 10.89 terabytes. So that just gives you an overview of what the storage pool is going to look like when it's done in that it's going to have four drives in it. So assuming we're happy with that, we're going to go ahead and click on Expand. And it's warning you that the drives that you're adding, the single drive, um, it's going to be erased. Not your RAID group, but the extra drive that you've put in. So if you've grabbed something laying around and it's got some data on it, you're going to lose the data on that single drive. So once you understand that, you're going to go ahead and click OK. And now it's preparing to start the expansion. And this is going to take quite a while because uh, depending on what you have your priority set to, uh, this could take you know even as long as a couple days to rebuild your array, depending on the drive size, the speed of the drives, um, the size of the array. There's a lot of factors that go into calculating how long it takes. So it's letting you know that um, it's started and not to play around with your storage pools or volumes that you've created until the expansion's completed. So we'll go ahead and click OK. If we look at the background tasks, it's telling us it's going to take about 31 hours 
it's probably going to drop a little bit here 25 hours so it's probably going to be somewhere between 20 and 25 hours before it's actually completed so it is going to take a you know the better part of a solid day to to complete rebuilding the array and then once that's done i'll show you what um, what happens and what you can do with the existing storage volumes that you have and how you can resize those volumes now that it's complete let's take a look at a couple of a uh, couple of things first off we've got the the graph here the storage pool so it shows about 5.2 terabytes of free space and we now see all four drives are part of the array so now the, our option is to reallocate some of the space so it makes more sense um, and to put it to use the way that we want to put it to use so the first thing we're going to do is go over to storage and snapshots and here we can see all the volumes that we've created on the storage pool and the one I was um, most interested in actually is this first one here uh, the data misc um, volume which is running low on storage and I need to copy about four terabytes to it and I don't have it so what I want to do is reallocate some of this space um, some of the free space to actually increasing this so what I'm going to do is right click on this and hit manage and here it gives me the option to resize the volume so I'm going to click on resize and you can see here the current capacity is 3 terabytes I've used 1.67 and I can now alter the size now I can actually make it smaller if I want but that's not the purpose here the purpose here is to actually expand the, the storage so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, for this experiment, I'm just going to make this, switch this to terabytes, and let's make this 5. So what we're doing is taking this 3 terabyte um, volume and increasing it to 5 terabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And as you can see here, it's expanding. So it's, it doesn't take all that long, probably 10, 15 minutes or so. But it's telling us it's uh, started and it's reallocating storage. So we'll wait a few minutes here till it gets done. And then we'll see that we have available storage left over. Okay, and as we can see here, it's completed. And I now have a close to a five terabyte volume. So I'm gonna hit close. And we can see here that the volume has been increased. Now, if I go back to storage overview, I still have 3.2 terabytes I can allocate elsewhere. I can allocate, I can make that volume larger. I can increase my encrypted data folder or volume larger. Um, I can do this any, any way I want, or I can create an entirely new volume and use up some of that space. The point is I have the flexibility and I have the space now to allocate the way I want. So in terms of um, increasing my volume size, that's pretty much all there is to do. So today we've covered adding a drive and then taking that space and allocating it to one or more volumes. And that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, don't forget to subscribe. If you like it, please hit a like and um, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video.